So in preparing some lessons that use leveled text, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. Um, first of all, you want to think about the level of your reader. You want to make sure that these texts are not too easy, um, but they're also not too going to frustrate them so much. So we want to stay within that instructional level. So using our running records to make sure that we're matching the reader to the text that's most appropriate for their instructional level. So we're staying within that zone of proximal development. In fact, right on the outside of that, where they need us to guide in and prompt in and push them um, so that it can eventually become their independent reading level. The other thing you want to think about is your child's interest and having a balance between genre. So if you have a child who gravitates towards nonfiction, um, starting with nonfiction is great, um, but making sure that we also teach into fiction so that their level does not become stronger um, with just one genre, we want to make sure we're balancing our instruction. Um, and the other thing you want to think about is reading behaviors. So what do they have control over when they're reading the text? Are they at a level where they still need to make sure that their voice is matching um, what the print says? And if so, are they using their finger and matching it appropriately? Or do they need a lot of heavy support to introduce the text? Um, are they relying on the picture support more than they are on the printed words? So noticing those behaviors through a running record can help us be really intentional in the decisions that we start to make. And so as teachers, we make our decisions based on what the text demands are and also what our reading behaviors are. So we have to think about those two pieces. So for example, this is a nonfiction text called Dinner at the Zoo. It's a level A text. And when I look at the text, the pattern is very predictable. So very simple. Um, there's a heavy picture support. So you can notice that all of the animal names would be seen here. There's also two words that are frequently appearing in text. We call those high frequency words or sight words that I know that my students would be able to um, quickly identify and pick up on those patterns. Um, and then there is one uh, multisyllabic word here that I might need to plant for them. In this particular particular text too, it adds this additional word on the end. And so this is a good clue to me to see, is my student making sure that they're matching what they say to what word is here so that they can catch like, oh, there's an extra word there. And how do they go about problem solving that? So as a teacher, I can use this as a moment of inquiry to see how are they applying some of those strategies, or I can use it as an instructional point to teach into that. It really depends on where my student is. So as I have my text, you might have multiple texts because you want to use a small group, or perhaps you have one because you're doing one-on-one -on -one tutorials. Either way, I suggest having a teacher copy for yourself. And so this is my teacher copy. I have what I want to plant for my student before we even start reading. So this is my intro notes. And I just sticky note um, on the book to just remind myself when I pull it back up, because sometimes I'll use this book um, and maybe not even return to it for a whole year. So it gives me some clues of what I wanna remember to teach into. Um, so for my intro for this particular text, my question is like, what do you see? And really helping our students name some of these animals. And then I wanna plant this pattern of the zebra is eating, the giraffe is eating and focusing on this word is. Now I could also focus on the word the, I just know that at level A um, is, they can, they can actually sound that out. So they can use the sounds of I and S to sound that word out. And then I also, put some notes at the end of my text. How am I gonna discuss this text so that we always have meaning at the forefront of our teaching? So planting points for discussion do two things. Um, if we have multiple students there, it promotes oral language um, skills. So having this conversation with each other and talking about it. If it's just you and the child, it also promotes some oral language skills and helping them verbalize what they've learned from the text. But most importantly, it shows them that um, while decoding is hugely important in our emergent reading, if there's no meaning there, we can't get to the comprehension piece of reading. So we want to just reinforce that when we approach a text, we are seeking to understand what the text is about, especially with nonfiction. We want to re really reinforce that we're learning from this text. It'll help them understand the differences between the genres. And so the next 
level or layer, I guess you could add on to that is some type of word work. And what is that going to look like? And so I know that at this level of text, um, a multi-sensory approach is not only hugely engaging, but it works really well for students. And so um, in my plan, I wanted to focus on this word is. Now that could have been anything. Um, I could have even focused on um, syllabication with eating. I could have um, focused on even, even another high frequency word here. So it depends on what your goal is on this particular text. Um, I planned for the word is, and you'll see that in the video example. Um, and I thought, okay, magnetic letters would be really engaging to make the word, but the sand tray, and actually I use salt, not even sand, but that texture and writing the letters because the student that I was working with um, is still working on letter formation. And so I knew that would help. And then I actually took it into writing because the child should interest into using some dry erase markers. So a really quick piece that reinforces um, specific phonics or um, foundational skills that you're working on, but connected with the text so that the student can see this work that we're doing outside of the text helps us become better readers. So let's watch some guided reading in action. This video clip features a five-year-old reading a level A text with me providing some support along the side. All right, Declan, we're reading this story called Dinner Time at the Zoo. So will you look through the pictures and see what kind of animals do we notice? What are we noticing? Look, what's that? A zebra. What's the zebra doing? Eating. Yeah, you're right. The zebra is eating. What else? Yeah. What's this? Look here. The giraffe is eating. The giraffe is eating. What up there? What else? What other animals do you see? Declan continues doing the picture walk, noticing each animal and what they are eating. As he is doing the picture walk, I am noticing what he is paying attention to. Things like looking at the picture, but really focusing on the print on the page, knowing that he is supposed to be reading something and anticipating a pattern in this text. All right, you've got it. All right, point to those words and read aloud to me, please. E. Does that say Z? You're looking at me like you know that doesn't say Z. Ta. She boy is eating. The giraffe is eating. I, I can do it so fast. The polar bear is eating. I want you to go slow and use your finger so that I can make sure that what the, you're saying matches the words on the page. Can you try the, it? As Declan continues reading, I teach into moments that I noticed he could use some support. So for example, his finger started going faster than his mouth was able to say the words, meaning he was trying to memorize that pattern instead of read the individual words and pay attention to the print on the page. So by slowing him down and just helping him focus on the print and making sure his voice matches, I can guide and prompt him into doing the reading work that is necessary to move him forward beyond a level A. The hippopotamus is great rereading. The monkey is eating. Whoop, you have an extra word there. The monkey is Ooh, the monkey is eating. eating. Hmm. Quack. Oh, you want to fill in with what he's eating. Does does this word start the same way as grass? No. What sound? Do, oh. You're already saying the sound. What word, What sound do you hear first? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. What sound do you hear right here? Let's look at the, let's put our eyes on the letter. What sound does that letter make? Uh. Mm. What are those two O's go together? They go, ooh, so t, ooh, say it faster, ooh. So in this moment, Declan is starting to focus on the picture support to help him predict what that word might be. 
My goal as a teacher is to get his eyes back on the print to decode the word because that word is not supported with picture support. And I also know that he can easily decode this if we look at the sounds in the word together. Ew. Try it one more time. Get your finger under each the word. The monkey, monkey is eating too. Great job, Declan. Can you tell me some of the animals that you saw? Sure. bottom it. Monkey, water bear, he was. What are some it. other animals we might find at the zoo? Lion. A lion? What do you think the lion eats? Meat. Some meat. As Declan and I wrap up our conversation around the text, really thinking about lifting his level of understanding beyond what he learned from the text itself, I prepare our workspace for some word work. All right, so we're going to work on one of our words that we practiced today. So before we write it, let me have the marker tip so we don't dry that one out. The word that we had was this. We were looking at this word. Do you remember what that word was? Let's use our sounds. Look right here. Look at the letter. No, look at the letter. Uh, hey, you're trying to remember the book. Let's look at the letter. What what sound does I make? Eh. Eh. And then what sound does S make? Shh. So let's say it quickly. It, it, sh it is. It is. It is. Can you make the letter with can you make the let the word with the letters? Oh, you did that so fast. <laughs> Can you pop letters. our letters and our sounds? Yeah. Try it one more time. What word is that? Is. Now that Declan has made the word using the magnetic letters, it's time for him to work on letter formation with this word. And a salt tray or any type of multi-sensory activity like sand, salt or any textured support can really reinforce letter formation. So in this activity, you can see that we are, I am using the verbal path to help him really focus on how to form each letter correctly before he goes into writing them. And he got the I down. I know it's messy. Yep. All right. Get that I. And for the S, we're going to start at the top. I want to do it back and oh, no. there we go back and around oh. let's write that one one more time okay. wonderful what word is that is. is are you ready to write it with your marker all right Enjoy. I know there's salt everywhere now. <laughs> we got we got messy, didn't we? All right, so we have our word here with our magnetic letters. I already I wrote it on top. It. I know. I was trying to mush push it down. Oh, there you go. You remember? Back. There you go. Do you want to write it another time in a different color? Let's yeah. write it in a different color. To finish the lesson, Declan continues to write the word, applying what he's learned from letter formation in the salt tray into his own handwriting using the Expo markers.